In Ukraine, there's fighting in the streets and fighting in the spreadsheets. Today, I want to talk about the world's potential one-two punch of an anti-Russian economic sanctions plan. We got finance over here and petroleum over here. Now, there's been a recent major economic development on the battlefield that happened when the world came together and kicked Russia out of the SWIFT banking program. Now this, well it was the economic equivalent of making Russia a cash only export economy. You can place the order on Amazon just fine, but pay him for it, well that's where you get into trouble. They are cash only now, no cards. When international buyers can't wire the money and instead have to go to some sort of physical location they control the hand over cash, presumably in one of those snap up an evil guy briefcases from the movies, well things start to move really slowly and become really unappealing really quickly. The goal with limiting these payment options is to just put the brakes on Russia's ability to do any business with the outside world, leaving their society on life support. Russia's current best offer is, our state owned petroleum company is going to deliver oil to you guys' door in return for cash upon receipt. It's hard to picture a back room that's far back enough to be deserving of a deal that shady. But unfortunately for Russia, they're not really finding very many customers for their cash for oil business model. Russia's traders are offering euros at massive discounts, as much as $18 a barrel below the price of Brent, and even then they're not finding buyers. Welcome to Vlad's Cash for Oil Rodeo Emporium. Quit stalling and get Russian because we're putting the best offers on the table. Got cash or crypto? That's right, crypto is skyrocketing because of this. Ha <laughs> ha, we can make a deal. Delivered to your door. Place your offers now because we don't want this to turn into going out of business sale. Remember, cash and crypto only. The federalities will feel really cracking down. And the Academy Award goes to... Not me. Now in another flank of the world's economic assault, we recently froze a majority of the $600 billion in Russian central bank assets that were being held abroad. Now that might sound like mundane detail, but wow, that is a whole lot of money, and wow, that is a very powerful central bank to have set your sights on. Now Russia was quite literally banking on us not taking that next step. If cutting off businesses from international banking was putting their economy on life support, well this move pulled the plug. The ace up Putin's sleeve was, if the world sanctions us and we don't have fresh cash coming in. I can at least use these saved up dollars to support the economy without any major inflationary concerns. It's a different currency. My hands? Well, they're free. You can do a lot of things, like for example, fighting inflation by buying up rubles with US dollars, therefore taking rubles out of the economy and replacing them with dollars. So Putin was looking at all this foreign money in his control and saying, ha! We're good to go and tell the world to back off. Wait, all the money's in the American banking? Oh, oh no. Now in response to being cut off from their reserves, the ruble has plummeted in value. Now before we get to the Russian central bank response, I gotta ask you a basic important question. Now what changed because of the sanction that caused the currency to collapse? Now most publications are simply hand waving away this whole detail saying, well yeah, it's, it's, it's the sanctions that caused the ruble to lose value. But the sanctions put more rubles into the economy? Did the sanctions overnight increase Russian citizens desire to go out and buy things to the point where they were willing to pay a whole bunch of additional money for those same things? The answer is no. and. Yes, well, kind of, but not in the happy, fun, American, let's get inflation going away. Shopping is fun, got a lot more money, and I'm willing to spend a little more than I was before. A more realistic interpretation of the Russian inflationary conditions is to view the ruble as a bit of a faith-based currency. You see, Russian banks have been doing trust falls with their citizens for years, and that frozen $600 billion was a mattress. 
even if we can't catch you, the federal government is going to be there to cover us. We got you. Now as soon as that mattress disappeared, yoink, people started asking, why am I still falling into your arms every day? I'm going to take my money out of the banks and dump it into any asset that might actually be able to maintain its value day after day. Now that has most recently presented itself in the form of buying electronics in a way that would put Black Friday to shame. You see, sanctions well, are going to make certain products very hard to get. So why not invest as much money as you can into those products as possible while they're still on the shelves. Resale values, they're going to be huge. Now it's been crazy to watch, but over the past few days the value of the ruble has really been what society suspects that the value of the ruble is going to be worth tomorrow. Wait, what? Someone says it's going to lose 20% of its value overnight? Well, I guess I might as well take the 20% price hike right now. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Big problem for central banks. The Russian currency plunged about 30% against the US dollar after these sanctions and freezing of reserves. So what do you do when you're the Russian central bank and you've got this cyclically falling currency? People are taking their money out of the banks and dumping it into whatever they can buy because they suspect it will lose even more value tomorrow. Well, you immediately more than double your key interest rate from 9.5% to 20%. Basically. Tell you what citizens, just keep your money in the bank, don't spend it and don't invest it. We'll give you 20% interest. Sure it might go down in value 30% in the same period, but we're trying. What do you say? Now Russians looked at that offer and definitively said, sure, for now. The exchange rate later recovered ground after quick action by Russia's central bank. I guess you could say it was a swift recovery. Now that's not to say mission accomplished or even that things are slightly back to normal. What the central bank did manage to do in Russia though was kill the momentum of a downward spiral and bite it right in the bud. The last play that Russia might have to secure some outside money is just a whole bunch of gold that they got sitting in vaults that they control. Now there are whispers right now that they could truck some of that gold out to China and sell it for cash at whatever price she is willing to pay. The ultimate cash for gold experience. Now in a similar vein, Russia is currently in the early phases of trying to create a new rival SWIFT system with Eastern European countries and China that could eventually facilitate wire transfers at some future point. More about that in maybe a future video. Now this brings us to the second one-two punch of the one-two punch that the world is currently throwing against Russia. Petroleum. You can only pay people to not spend money for so long. At some point, you're going to have to sell something to someone. Now if you look at Russia's exports over here, they're about as diverse as a 90s sitcom. An economic blockade that doesn't include petroleum would be like announcing that huh, I'm going to boycott Walmart by no longer leaving a penny in that little jar by the cashier on my way out from buying a new plasma screen television. Russia is so reliant on this petroleum export specifically to Europe that despite the fact that there is currently a 40 mile long military traffic jam on the road to Kiev, you bet they found a way to keep all of those Russian pipelines flowing through Ukraine to Europe running. Priorities people. Now with that statement you are probably scratching your head because wait Europe? <laughs> They're still buying oil from Russia? Oh yeah. Are they paying in cash for it? You know because of the whole Russia had a swift pronouncement? Heck no they're using wire transfers. Turns out that when you write the world's financial rules, those rules are for thee, not for me. There is one significant loophole in all these sanctions, and it's for buying oil and gas. Now this gives Russia a little bit of wiggle room in this whole thing. This invasion of Europe was funded in part by the good people over at Europe. Now when it comes to Europe, Russia is essentially their sketchy drug dealer. 
yeah, we don't like to be associated with you, but you're the closest supplier we got and we really need our fix. I swear, I'm gonna kick my petroleum addiction. But right now, I gotta keep my citizens warm through the winter. Oh man, I really need an intervention. No, no, not like that. No, is Russia's military intervention enough of an intervention for Europe? Well, my drug dealer just invaded a country. Maybe it's time I put down the pipe and figure some things out. The problem is, the alternatives in this scenario really suck. First, you could suck it up and stop buying Russian gas. Problem is, that is going to be very unpopular, probably. The main time Westerners hit the streets is when they can't afford to drive. Hugely successful populist movements, for example France's Yellow Vest movement, started around increases in gas prices. Some people are turning to America because hey, we produce more gas than a Taco Bell after party. And while a third of our exports do currently go to Europe, piping in gas from Russia is a whole lot cheaper than packing it onto a boat and then shipping it from America to Europe. Again, we gotta keep those prices down to keep the people happy. And sure, we might lose a few Eastern European countries in the process, but that's a price that Western Europe is willing to pay. Of course, not everything is smooth sailing on the energy front. For example, if you're one of the countries who doesn't control the financial rules, there are all sorts of hanging swords of Damocles. For example, what if the world changes its mind and decides to start going for the jugular? Before refineries and banks are certain that they won't fall afoul of complex restrictions in different jurisdictions, they're simply just not going to do business with Russian oil, traders, and others involved in the markets. Now, market players are also fearful of measures that could target oil exports directly that might land as fighting in Ukraine intensifies. I mean, just in general, forget next week. No one knows what is going to happen an hour from now. A lot could change between when your barrel of oil leaves the port and when it gets to you. For the Russian economy right now, the devil is in the details. And there are all these details that are biting them in the butt. For example, insurance involved in importing oil from a country at war. That tanker could get shot down. I'm not going to insure your import. That was the reason India recently stopped importing oil from Russia. Well, that and of course the fact that India could not find the little swift carve out that Western Europeans gave themselves. So they also had to figure out a way to pay for it all independently. So that's the majority of the economic war against Russia. Their lifeblood is selling oil to Europe and other countries. Beyond that, they don't really have very many cash reserves right now and can't accept non-cash payments until they figure out some sort of system. And to top it all off, they have to fund their government in an incredibly destructive war that they're currently waging. We'll see how things turn out in the coming days, but I just hope this video isn't out of date before I click the publish button. Now before I go. I didn't mention the freezing of oligarchs assets. That just felt less like a systemic attack and more like something focused on hurting a few specific individuals. This, well that whole thing is happening over there. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into economic issues, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. And I put my thumb up a little early on this one, but like and remember to comment. And uh, lastly, as always, thank you for watching.